In this video today, I'm going to share with you my 10 point domain research and due diligence plan. You see, the main problem I see people having is it's very similar to the problem I had when I first started domaining and finding out about age domains is people get all excited and they go out there and buy loads of domains but end up with loads of stinkers, which is a technical term by the way for duds, bad domain names. And that's why I'm going to show you my 10 point plan because this plan is designed to uncover the diamonds from the rough, if you like. So today we're going to cover keywords again. I know we've talked a lot about keywords, but we're going to just cover that off. We're going to cover domain usage. What is the domain being used for? We're going to cover domain age. So the age of the domain, how to check that manually. We're going to cover the history of a domain, how to check that manually. We're going to cover popularity stroke traffic of a domain. Then we're going to cover Google page rank. Then backlinks. Then pages indexed. Then DMOS and Yahoo directory listings. And then we'll finish off with trademark domains, how to avoid domains that have trademarks on them. Now I've talked a lot about keywords in this video series, and that's because they're the cornerstone of your whole SEO campaign. And I think you probably know by now that doing your whole keyword research and more importantly, total market research underpins everything before you actually choose your niche and therefore before you actually choose your domain name. Now once you know the keywords you're targeting, it's important to know exactly how you're going to be attacking your niche and this will obviously affect your whole domain choice and as always, if you can get exact match keywords for your domain, this is great but it's not always that easy and that's where prefixes and suffix come into play. So for example, if you're doing a review site, then it would make sense that you would have keyword or key phrase reviews or review.com or you know any other TLD that you can get your hands on or country code TLD. This would be the ideal alternative if you couldn't get the keyword exact domain name. To manually check the age of a domain name, I usually use domaintools.com. Uh, this just tends to have a much better interface than whois.net, for example. So let's take a look at domaintools.com. So here we are at domaintools.com. Domaintools is a fantastic resource for domain tools, actually. Um, does exactly what it says on the tin, but all we're bothered about is their lookup tool. So this is the box in the middle here and we just type in the domain name there. So we'll type in market samurai com and then press search and it gives you the details of the registrant and the administration contact and the technical contact. But we're not bothered about that. We're bothered about this figure at the bottom here and this is the creation date and it says here it was created on June the 20th 2008 so it's just coming up to two years old and boy so much has happened in those two little years hey so that's how you check the domain age on domain tools checking the history of a domain name is really important because it may actually be a domain that has great age but it may actually have an unsavory history, which is not only not relevant to the niche you're targeting, but also it could be potentially useless to you. And it could also be damaging, for example, if it was in the gaming or adult porn industry. To manually check the history of a domain, you can go to archive.org, which stores archives of many, many websites. So let's take a look at archive.org. So here we are on archive.org and I'm going to check what's known as their Wayback Machine, which is this 
here, this box here, and I'm going to check a domain that I saw this morning on namejet.com. I typed in the key phrase auction and it brought up a domain called auctiondrop.com, which I thought was very catchy and kind of brandable. So let's take a look at the history of auctiondrop.com. So you just type in the domain in this box here. And then click take me back. And as you can see, it's been recording the archives of this domain, auctiondrop.com, since 2003. And it looks like there's been quite a lot of activity here. So, which is always a good sign because it means that the, the, the site was updated quite a lot. So let's click on one of these pages here. We'll go for March 06, 2007. So it was a real site, as you can see, selling luxury goods at incredible prices, as it says. Um, so it looks like it's got a fairly decent history. I would go in and I'd check more dates and check the most recent dates as well, which is really important. But that's how you check archive.org. The only sure way to get accurate traffic data is if you actually have access to the website itself and you know if you're able to install an actual analytics package like Google Analytics. But there are other ways to get very, and I say this cautiously, rough estimates as to how popular the site are. And these are sites like Alexa.com and Compete.com. Now the Google Toolbar page rank isn't entirely accurate, but it does give you an indication of how Google sees your site. Now to check manually, there's just absolutely loads of PR checker sites out there. So you can just type in PR checker, for example, into Google and it'll, it'll pull up loads of sites. Or you could get the Google Toolbar extension on your browser. And again, you just go to Google and search for Google Toolbar. And there's loads of other SEO extensions for Google Chrome uh, browser or Firefox browser, which give you full statistics. For example, there's SEO for Firefox, which I use on Firefox, and then there's an SEO extension on Chrome. There's just bags of them. Now, sometimes domain names have a fake Google page rank. This basically means the Google toolbar shows the wrong page rank for the actual domain. It's usually an inflated page rank because someone has directed their website to a website with a higher page rank. To check for fakes, you need to go to Google and type in info, then colon, then www dot, then your domain name. And then if a different domain name shows up, then it means it's actually probably forwarding to that domain name. And therefore, the page rank is a fake. So let's take a look at an actual fake right now. So we type in info and then colon and then www dot and then erk77 dot com and see what it brings up and as you can see it is forwarding to a eastern yahoo site so it's a clear fake and there again you can see the page rank here page rank 9 of the actual site that it's being forwarded to which is yahoo let's click on it and I can't read that, so let's click translate. Ah, there we go. So it's a Japanese Yahoo site. It's also worth pointing out that um, these fake, or what appear to be fake, page rank websites, they're not all done intentionally. Um, you know, people will forward their domains to their main sites and so on. This clearly was a fake, though, because it... Um, appears to me anyway to have nothing to do with Yahoo. So this is how you check for fakes. So let's take a look now at backlinks. Checking the quality and the quantity of backlinks to a domain allows you to guess at how much link juice the domain may have going forward. You can do this by going to Google and typing in link colon www dot and then the domain name 
and then this will pull up all of the links that Google shows. Yahoo usually shows more links, so if you want more information, go to Yahoo and do exactly the same. So let's take a look at some link information now. So we arrive at yahoo.com and I'm going to check the backlinks to auctiondrop.com, seeing as it's in Namejet at the moment for sale. So I type in link colon www.auctiondrop.com and as you can see it brings up all of the links. Now I have SEO for Firefox and I can't see any of the page rank of these links and I'd like to see those so a little trick is go into Yahoo and type in link domain colon then the actual domain so auctiondrop.com then hyphen site colon then auctiondrop.com and this is bringing up the links and also the page rank I, I can see now. Now you do need SEO for Firefox add-on to be able to see all of this data which is page rank, age, link, CDU links, Alexa rank and various other statistics. So we know from the other page there was about 300 and odd links but now we can see a little bit more detail because I can see the actual sites that are linking to it. I can see this one here, CNN, what a great link, it's page rank 4 and it's a sub page of CNN you know old domain pointing at it with lots of link juice in that domain of course you know links that come from big news broadcasters like CNN are fantastic links and here here we go again a sub domain of the Guardian which is a UK big new UK broadsheet uh, newspaper again very well respected link there it's only page rank 2 but it's a good link see if there's any more good ones. USA Today which again big big link there. Washington Post another fantastic link there. Let's check on the other page. As you can see here it's got a Yahoo directory listing here so we know it's Yahoo directory listed page rank 3 there and here we go an EDU link there Stanford University it's got an India Yahoo directory link there, another news broadcaster link here, another big news broadcaster here, another CNN link here from a page rank 3 on CNN. And you can obviously see the size of these, these sites pointing to it. This one here has got 214,000 links to that site. So some altogether good links there to auctiondrop.com. And that's how you check for backlinks. So let's see how you check for Google Pages indexed now. The greater number of indexed pages a domain has, the better. And if the domain isn't yet indexed by Google, well, this is just another hurdle for when you get your website up and running. To check indexed pages, go to Google and type in site colon www dot and then your domain name and this will show you all the pages that are indexed by Google. So let's take a look at a domain name on Google now then. So I think we'll stick with auctiondrop.com which is the domain that's available for sale in Namejet. So to check Google for index pages it's site colon www dot auctiondrop.com and as you can see here, it's got 228 pages indexed in Google, and here they all are. And it's worth checking these index pages as well, so that uh, if you do buy the domain, you can build these pages out as well. So that's how you check the pages indexed on Google. If you can find a domain that's already DMOZ or Yahoo directory listed, then this is a huge bonus because Google sees these listings as a big plus because they both have big barriers to entry which again is another hurdle that you need to cross once your site is built. To check if a domain is DMOZ listed go to DMOZ.org and to check if a domain is Yahoo directory listed go to search.yahoo.com forward slash D-I-R.
Once you've found the domain you like and before you actually put a bid on it, it's important that you do one final check and that's to check whether the domain is trademarked. If you're going for actual generic key phrases or keywords, these are very rarely trademarked. But again, it's worth doing the check anyway. If the domain is trademarked, then there is actually a good chance that you could lose the domain later on down the line and waste your money. There's different trademark directories for each country and the one for the US is tes2.uspto.gov So make sure you search the trademark directory in the actual country you intend to do business. To find local directories just go to your local Google so if you're in the UK for example go to google.co.uk and then put in trademark search in the search field and then hit go and it should bring up the actual directory in that country. In the whole of my domaining career I've only ever had an experience with one trademark domain but I did actually lose the domain name so it's, it's quite rare but you know when it does happen you know you can lose the domain name so it's always better to be safe than sorry. And even if the domain name or phrase in the domain name isn't trademarked, then it's still worth checking the other extensions out. So if the domain you're looking at is a .com and you intend to trade in the UK, then it's worth checking all the other generic TLDs like .net, .org, .info, etc. And also the UK CCTLD, so .co.uk, .org, .uk, just to make sure that no one's trading under that name because it can cause complications later on down the line. Now, I'm no lawyer and I don't pretend to be, but it's always worth being cautious if you intend to spend money on your domain and develop it. Domain selection can actually take some patience because the domain you're looking for might not be there on the Monday, yet the market may deliver it on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. But there are thousands and thousands of domains hitting the market every day, so the likelihood of the right domain being just around the corner is usually very high. And as you've seen, there's quite a few considerations to take into account when buying age domains, but it is worth it. And putting in the effort now can mean you don't have to pay for costly oversights later.